We're talking Netflix makes history with Janet Mock and did Harvard hurt a little white boy? All of that and more on Black Hollywood Live, The Trip. You're tuned into Black Hollywood Live, the world's first digital broadcast network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Tune in right now. Like, hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Dab on. Uh, wow. Oh, that was too much. I couldn't do all that. What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are at Black Hollywood Lives, The Trend. I'm your host, Courtney Stewart. As you can see, Dee Dee, Derry Lay here, y'all. We don't wow. know wow. how he just gonna ditch us like an hour before the show. But no, he's like off doing important shoots and things you know, making for that CBS LA, y'all. Check him out on the weekends, looking around and roaming around LA. But since Daryl doesn't want to be here and hang out with us, I got my brother in the building. It's the Jesse and Courtney show. Ow, ow. Just a Janet in a building. What's up? What's up? What's up? You know, just living my life like it's golden. I'm living just sitting like here like golden. gagging that Bismarck key paid off his debt to 50 cent with food stamps, but that's all right. That's a joke, right? Nope. Seriously? Mm-hmm. Did that really? What website is that on right now? ER Web Spotlight of the Week. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Well, uh, we have lots of topics this week. We're going to let you guys know, like, up front that we've got a lot to talk about because the reality is this week has actually had some wild stuff going on like and there's been some breaking news today and all kinds of things going good, on bad, good bad and around. ugly so we'll slide those things in as we talk about all the other things that we want to talk about and talk about Jesse's hair because it is looking like really perfect like you have like oh. perfectly like fan bangs right now like what is well, that about thank you I don't okay. know I got I used I actually used herbal essence today. <laughs> I went to Big Lots and I was like, I need some shampoo. I was Wait, which fi- one? What color is the j- bottle? I don't know. It's a fancy one though. Is it was it like, it? yeah. One but of you the know, clear Big Lots bottles or the blue? No. Okay. It's like a br- like a reddish brown, and it's like oh. a luxurious herbal essence, but okay. it was discounted at Big Lots, <laughs> uh, which means it was luxurious like five years ago. But whatever. Hey. I'm out here. My bang is popping. I mean, the bangs you know are fanned perfectly. Looks right, like thanks. they're just like to wash and go. Okay. Hey. I didn't bother to wash. I just went and went and put a wig on. Oh, I wish. So, uh, <laughs> yes. All right. So, what you got? What news you got? What you got to tell us? All right. So, <clears throat> first of all, did you, would you, are you watching Pose? The I am, season? but I did not see the new episode because I did not go to the gym this morning and I'm only allowed to watch it when I'm at the gym. So, don't tell me what happened. Oh, see, it's such a show. I don't know if I can, I have to be like so engaged. Oh, no, no. It. It's perfect for the gym because it keeps me focused and I'm not thinking about what I'm doing. So, if I'm running, I'm not thinking about the fact that I'm running and can't but breathe. Like, do you, I'm just Because, like, the, the thing I love about Pose is it makes me laugh. I smile. I cry every episode. Mm-hmm. I go through all the emotions. Yeah. Like, I mean, you it can keeps be that your emotional. At, at I mean, but I don't, get, I don't really get emotional. Emotional watching oh, most. Girl. There's very few television shows like that are really gonna like. I'll think it, but like to actually like go through the feeling of it. It, it takes a it takes a lot for me to get there. Well, and I heart. actually think the pose first episode. I'm interested because the first episode from what was it last week? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how behind I am just because I only watched it at the gym and obviously I haven't been to the gym very much. Um, but I was There's kind of two not ex- excited about some of the yeah, writing. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of like, it's very, it was very like on the nose and preachy and like a little awkward acting wise for me. For Sandra Bernhardt, I love you. I'm obsessed with you. I think you're amazing. But her, her, yeah. No, yeah. The first episode for me was like a little uh, I feel like they were trying to fit a lot into one episode, yeah. and it was like, guys, at first episode of the season, you got a third. Yeah. Keep it going. Yeah. Which, congratulations to them for getting They have third. already gotten renewed for a third hey. season. Congratulations. Black and gay, okay? Yes. Um, so, speaking of, Miss Janet Mock, who is a writer-director on yes. uh, For Pose, she just signed a legendary deal, honey, legendary. with Netflix. She'll be doing two shows. Um... One is a half-hour drama, and then the other one is a college show. Like, both are series. Oh. And uh, both will be in... I don't know if it's going to be in the eyes of, or it will feature a lot of trans women, but it's basically she came out and said that she's really excited because this will be a first to where a large platform is really going to allow 
a trans woman, especially a trans woman of color, mm -hmm. tell her story. Um, and I think it's important. You know, uh, last week over at After Buzz, oh, this week over at After Buzz, on After Buzz tonight, make sure you guys check it out every Monday night at 9.30 p.m. Um, I sat down and with this girl, Jasenia, and she was talking about she dates a trans man. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, it was weird for me to love somebody but I wanted to ask so many questions mm -hmm. and there isn't enough material out there. Yeah, to get the information without, so, yeah. So, you know, I think it's, you know, that's why I do love Pose because I think it really does a very good job of telling a story without it glorifying negativity. I think it, I think it is a very positive direction. And so, shout out to her for getting this. I know. Netflix Two is still shows. giving out all these coins. I'm like, okay, how do they still I have them? I don't know. Like, I feel I'm a little nervous that, like, this world of television is going to, like, be, like, the real estate bubble and it's going to burst at some point. Because I'm like, how are we getting all this content and content and content and content across all these different platforms, like, everywhere? At some point, it's got to explode. Yeah, and, like, and the it's funny, too, because anymore. it's, like, I try getting into some of the Netflix ones, and it's, like, some of them are so good, and some of them are... Mediocre. Like, do you watch The Society? No, I have not. I'm trying. I'm trying. Like, I'm really it's not trying. Working for you. Yeah, because when I'm in a show, I'll, I'll give it three, four episodes, and then it's, like... It, uh, if, it, if it doesn't hit, it doesn't hit. It doesn't hit. Nah, I don't know. Well, Janet, hopefully it hits. Because mm -hmm. I don't really know. It's kind of like Janet Mox doing things, and then the Obamas are doing things, and then we got Shonda's stuff that still hasn't quite come out yet. Well, wait, is her stuff with Netflix? Mm -hmm. Oh, it is. She oh, did her yeah. deal with Netflix, and we still have Ryan Murphy stuff that hasn't come to Netflix yeah. yet. Like, there's a lot that is Which, uh, in the, the fire. Is, so, okay, we actually had this really good bring... I'm obsessed with Pose, you guys. Right now, yes. Handmaid's Tale and Pose... I haven't watched Handmaid's yet. Oh, my God. Because they were releasing, like, an episode at a time, and I needed a bunch of episodes or something. No. There were only three available for season two the first time I looked and I was like okay where the girl rest we of on them? season three that's whatever season oh. it is like it, no, there yeah, were literally three five. episodes exactly so yeah like, it was weird I they like drop three and then all of a sudden it was like four or five yeah, I get what I they do like, they wanted you to get in that like yeah. I'm fucking and I'm hooked I'm like S sign me up how much is my dealer how much do I gotta pay because I find it exhausting so I'm like I need all the episodes so if I'm gonna watch it I'm gonna get through it and then I'm gonna be done because the second season I was not fully invested in yeah well the second season was like deep on like another level this one though I'm kind of like it, I love a show because you know sometimes they jump the shark and mm -hmm. I gotta say I love the fact that they keep the same tone and energy throughout all the seasons like I'm actually like really here for it because a lot of I think a lot of them it's hard for that but where I was going with it was I had a good discussion with uh, about Ryan Murphy right mm -hmm. and I was like I honestly truly think to me they were like oh everything Ryan Murphy touches is gold and I was like mm -hmm. not everything because the Nini show, nope. Wasn't gold. Wasn't, wasn't gold. gold. Wasn't he did gold. Glee, right? Yeah, he did Glee. Glee was gold first two seasons. Yeah. And then it Tarnished. Fell. Yeah. And then I loved Feud and Pose. Mm -hmm. Feud was everything. I won another Feud. I but feel like we could who? get... I don't know. Like, like who are you going to do? Who? I don't know. Whitney and somebody? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Ryan J-Lo. They don't, they don't, but that's not like a, like a real. I mean, I know, feud. but it would be funny. I don't know. I don't know. Christina and Brittany. Oh yeah, that would be good. <laughs> and how they really didn't have a feud. There and the, wasn't how a feud. We made the feud. We made the feud. But that's, that's sort of the one. story of most of them. That's true. We, the public and media, made the 50 feud. Fifty Cent versus Ja Rule. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! It's called the depletion. Oh. <laughs> Oh my God! Well, shout out to Ja Rule because he's got a show now. Our guest from a couple weeks ago, Datari Turner, oh, yeah. has him on Growing Up Hip Hop. So, oh, and y'all can check him out. Shout out to We TV. They're doing a lot. Yeah, actually, yeah. and a lot with the hip hop community. Yeah, because they're doing a. I think it's July sixteenth. Don't shoot me. I'm mm -hmm. just banging this off my head because I saw it on Jermaine Dupri's Instagram yesterday. Um, 
they're doing a documentary on So So Deaf and the rise of Jermaine Dupri. And I That's beautiful. am happy because I feel like he's someone that gets slept on. He gets slept on hard. And, and like So So Deaf set a tone for people. I'm sorry. A tone for a generation. Yeah, like y'all okay. was not purchasing Louis Vuitton like that. The white with all the colors on it. No, I'm saying. <laughs> the brat and all no, that. No, no, so shout out to them for like, I think that they really have found their niche right now. Yeah. And that's like their their lane and I like that they're supporting that. Well, so. I would say something, but Oh, say it. my girl come Well, on, I mean, us. it's sort of like a, a me here. it's sort of like a, a a network trick. You use the black community and the urban community oh. to oh. you build on the backs of the black and urban community and then you disappear. Fox but, was the number one like true for people that did that and you follow suit. And it's not I mean it is what true, it is. True, but with but what I like about WeTV is they allow, like, Jermaine Dupri has a stake in it. Like, Oh, yeah. Well, it's times are different. Yeah, so yeah. now, at least, there are a lot of producers of black and brown and whatnot that are behind the scenes doing things. So it's a slightly different situation. But Pause. What about Wendy no Williams? I, I feel like I'm sorry. Like, people speak on Wendy. Oh, okay. I think that Wendy's living her life. Oh, I love that you didn't say best. Go ahead. What's the next Well, topic? I don't know if it's best. Well, we're going to like shift gears and talk about something a little more serious just because it's been going on for quite some time and we haven't actually spoken about it on the show. Um, that has been a specific choice on my part because I usually put most of the show together um, because the details were not clear for me, at least, and I wanted to kind of read some more and figure out what's really going on. So today we just want to kind of talk a little bit about what's going on in the Sudan. Um, because in the end, a lot of us can often feel like, and we've talked about this before, how like we wonder like what black and brown people in other places are like going through mm -hmm. and how there are similar experiences to what we're going through. And really what's happening over there is scary. Um, it's scary, and it's scary also just because we are living, even in our American democratic society, that we live in, in a place where we have a leader that is a little unorthodox and leans a little towards authoritarianism in a way that we haven't seen before, and it makes me uncomfortable, and I know it makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Um, but obviously not saying that we are like the Sudan, but the truth of the matter is is that it's not not easy to fall victim to that situation if you don't continue to pay attention. So just for those of you that don't know, there is some massive horrible-ish going on over there. Basically, um, the military took over the country in April after they ousted an authoritarian leader who had been in power for the last 30 years. So this is not a short thing. It's not something that just happened. This has been brewing for quite some time. Um, protesters took to the streets after, you know, the um, leader al-Bashir was arrested and sent away and they've been protesting and they thought that the power was the military was going to take over put home dude in jail and then like all the power was going to be given to the people and they were going to try to set up a government by the people mm -hmm. for the people situation it obviously did not go that way the military is still in power and they continued to protest and work protests and they were protesting work for so long at one point like it put a city completely at a standstill like there was nothing happening in the city nothing was working nothing was going because people refused to go to work and protest but as of June third, the military decided to crack down on that. And since then, they have been beating, murdering, and raping people like crazy. Right now, the numbers that we have access to, about 118 people have been killed. There have been killed. over 70 brutal rapes, rapes. And they seem to be specifically targeting a lot of women because um, black and brown women have sort of been at the forefront of the protests. And they've been doing some wild stuff. We're hearing stories about the military beating women with their batons in their, mm -hmm. um, in their uh, reproductive areas and specifically attacking their bodies in that way. And of course, the rapes and men that try to intervene and stop gang rapes are being murdered or raped as well. Um, so there's some really dark stuff going on. And it's kind of crazy that like news wise, I don't know. I watch the news pretty regularly. I've seen very little on the news. Most of the information that I've seen has been on social media. It's so funny, too. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also funny, too, because I actually brought it up to somebody, and I won't say what type of situation it was, mm -hmm. but someone who I thought easily would have just... I didn't, like, say what was happening. I just brought up the name. Yeah. And they were like, what? Yeah. What? And I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. Like... The information's really not... You know, and we think that, you know, a lot of it is, um, 
you know, posting, turning our profile picture blue. Like, yes, all that stuff does bring awareness. I do understand that. But if you aren't looking at, you know, some posts leave a number to call, you know, and to call your officials and your government and say this, how this is bothering you and you want this to be something that you want us to help with. It, the, the number that really blew my mind was how much money Notre Dame raised. Yeah. And how much coverage With they got. With zero people killed. With, and, or harmed. And yet somehow we have done nothing. It's disgusting to help To help those women, children, and people in the Sudan right now. But speaking of action, that's sort of why I had not tackled this story yet. Because I was trying to figure out, like, well, like, is there something we can wait. do? Yeah, yeah. Like, what? Like, how? Whatever. And there is like handles that y'all have to be careful with this social media thing because there was the one social media handle that claimed it for every like repost they would it was the Sud- um, Sudan Mule Project yeah. that with every repost they would give a meal to um, a child in distress in Sudan. Disgusting. That was absolutely not the case, and that person had no intentions of ever doing that. They actually admitted that they were just trying to get followers. followers. And also that's, that Cash App thing that everyone keeps liking and doing all that, that's false too. Sorry. Yeah, so just so you part. know, like do your take your time to do some more research and dig a little deeper. What I found in terms of my research that I can share with you guys is that you can obviously call Congress. Mm-hmm. Um, the number is 202-224-3121. Cuz everything just, isn't about money. Some of us don't have yeah. that and I get that and don't feel like and because and in the you end, don't Making governments move to act is generally the better plan in general. So you can do that. Also, the thing that I discovered that I didn't know about, do you know about ResistBot? Mm. Okay, so ResistBot, you can send a text. You just text the word RESIST in capital letters to 50409. And basically, you'd get like prompted instructions of like what they want you to do, and they basically generate a letter that they send to Congress. Wait, let's do it to, right now. I've already done it. So, what is the number? It's text five zero four zero nine. Text the word resist, and it'll ask you for some information, like where your zip code and your name, and it'll give you who your representatives are if you don't already know them, and then you generate a letter. In over text that you want to send, you can say, I support supporting, you know, oh. the World Says, Health Organization. Say Congress, House, Senate, yeah. or President. It Choose tells you what you want to you contact. Well, President, I'm not going to reach the President because he ain't read. Go to care. Congress. Yeah. So they can, like, what have you. But anyway, so they will generate a letter that supposedly goes to your representative. I read online through fax. It generates it into a fax that goes to the office. I'm not certain of all of that, but it seems to be an accurate thing that actually happens. So you can do that. You can also try to get in touch with the Khartoum Alumni Association fundraiser and that they have an actual group of alums at the university in the Sudan on the ground that are trying to give food and supplies away. So if you can contact that university and figure out how to do donations, that is also an option. And you can also sign the change.org petition online that is The petition is demanding that the UN investigate the June 3rd acts of human rights violations in the Sudan by that military. So if they actually like look into it and claim it was like acts against human rights and things like that, they can actually move forward with doing more things to help these people who are in distress over there. And obviously it's a constantly changing situation and we don't have full control and know everything that's going on, but thought we should try to give y'all at least a little bit of information yeah. that we think is accurate. And obviously, if it changes, we'll try to update you and tell you what's up and keep moving forward. But yeah, it's kind of crazy that that's like not in the news. Like I've been watching the news all day today, and that was not there was not one single story, not one single story today about it. And it blows my mind. Like why? Because <clears throat> I hate to say it, but there's. Not a whole lot of care for black and brown destruction. Especially, I mean, they're not here. That but, and doesn't Especially not in other countries. Other people. I mean, these are black and brown people, and they're also often Muslim. So not really something that sells ads in America. So cable news, Disgusting. not really that interested. But Which is why it's so crazy when you look at social media. Mm-hmm. And it's like these companies, you look at them, like, and it's like, okay, you want the hits, you want the views. But you're giving it to Facebook. You're giving it to Instagram because you aren't reporting on it. So you see this movement happening. Mm -hmm. Like, at least be ignorant enough to be like, oh, this movement's happening. We should catch on and talk about it. I'm fine with that kind of ignorance because at least then they're now prompted to have to 
say, say something, something about it. or something. I don't know, but yeah, it's disgusting. It's kind of crazy, but that's the news that we have and that we know, and that's what we're gonna go with for right now. Okay, mm. so there you go for the. Uh, is it still like it took forever? I feel like I got like three hundred texts from them before. I, like, yeah, actually, everything. I had to stop for a second. It but keeps going. I want you to know how quickly you can do no, this. No, Literally, it's right I'm away. I'm at the point where they want me to write what I want to yes. say, but I'm not gonna do that recording because my mind will be so. Good. Yeah, you'll be like doing that, 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 that. It's fine, but like you write a cute little letter over text, and it's easy. That's you so guys. easy. It's yeah. so easy to do, and. Some people will be like, oh, I don't know if it's effective. We don't know if it's effective, but we do know not doing anything is not effective. So do a little so something. So, like, yeah, you only got picked up the phone call. Because no. I know some people may be like, I know, like, I'm not going to lie. At first, I was like, whoa, well, I don't know what to really say. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I'm not 100% educated in this. I see the facts. I see what is uh, written in front of me. And I don't like it. And I yes. want change. But... Sometimes fear in not knowing causes you to hold yourself back. And here is a way. This is this is the best way, actually. Yeah. Because when I saw the number, the phone number, I was like, okay, that's actually, mm-hmm. I could do that. Yeah. I don't have money, but I can I can do that. You and know? it's cool and then to you look say at, that, like, I think it's cool to say, like, I don't know what can be done. But I do know that I don't like what I'm seeing that's happening. And I would like my country to represent the side that is helping try to do something yeah. different. And if you guys have come up with something different, I support doing that. If you out here tweeting, write that text. We just I just did it, so you at home should have hit that too. Um, quick, yesterday yes. was Juneteenth. Yes, it was. You know, and yesterday I really like thought to myself, which is so funny actually. So, by the way, I'm gonna have a little Fourth of July situation. Hold on, in case you guys don't know what oh, Juneteenth yeah. is. It is the day that black folks was actually free as slaves, even though the Emancipation Proclamation was uh, given two years before that. Most black folks in the South didn't know or weren't even permitted to, like, not be slaves for two years just because of where they were and didn't have access and they were being terrorized regardless. So basically, the Emancipation Proclamation pretty much freed the people that were on the border for the Union so they could, like, go to the Union side and they were safe. But, like, everybody else was pretty much still slaves for the rest of the war. And then... The general, the Union general, whose name I can't remember right now, came to Galveston, Texas, on this day, on the 19th of June in 1865, and he alerted. He's like, "Hey, yo, y'all free for real?" And they was like, "What? We free? Where? Where did that happen? How did that happen?" So that sort of developed into the Juneteenth celebration, which, by the way, should be a national holiday. National. Honestly, like, should be a national holiday. It actually, like, it's like, okay, I don't, you know, July Fourth, you know, I get it, and like, respect to all of the it military is the and inception the of the nation. I, I get that. I support that. However, this, like, anyone arguing this is, again, I'm gonna use the word disgusting, um, because to me, it's actually a bigger celebration because it actually represents what our country is it's supposed, supposed to, to be. And we Unity, should support equality. That. Uh, Shout out to Pennsylvania yes. because they did make it. Uh, Governor Tom Wolf holiday. Shout signed out to it. You. It was a. Uh, na, 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 na. I forget what it was. It was the wrong tweet. But his name is Go- uh, Governor Tom Wolf. He signed it. Whatever amendment it was. I didn't retweet that one, sorry. We support that. But either or, that's awesome. And I'm, I'm happy that that happened because I feel like, okay, it's just one. It's a small little Hey, no, I don't say it's just one. I think it's a big deal that somebody stepped up and said, Because now it's like everyone you know else what? step up. Yeah. That is something that we should be celebrating. and Because it's the same thing. It's the same idea with, because obviously we talked last week about the fact that on Juneteenth, Ta-Nehisi Coates and uh, Danny Glover would be on Capitol Hill. Mm. Testifying for reparations. I said testifying. Is that the right word? I don't know. Um, so, like, <laughs> I feel like we're in church. But, we're uh, drinking rose. Yes. And um, so a lot of people are like, eh, whatever. It's not going to do that. I'm like, no. The fact that we're having the conversation matters. And we should be happy that we're having the conversation, even though we get in pushback like Mitch McConnell, which was also breaking news, his commentary <laughs> in regards to the reparations conversation. He literally said, basically, nobody's alive today that... Um, um, had anything to do with slavery, so like, why would we be doing reparations? That makes no sense. Um, Tana Hesey Coates came back and clapped back real strong. Y'all should check that out. Go to my Facebook page. I reposted it. It was fantastic, and I love him so much for it. Um, but then we had a senator. Uh, oh my gosh, I will look it up. I think his name is Tim. I refuse to remember his name because I can't deal with fuckery. Excuse my language. But he, it's a black, the one of the few black um, Republican senators, I believe, and he came back and was like, yeah, I don't really get the whole reparations 
generations thing. Like, how do we even, I mean, I just think it's a way, like, how do we figure it out? It's too hard to figure out. He literally, his argument for not dealing with it is because it's too hard to figure out. Okay. So, yeah. That was one of those moments where you're like, there are C plus people in the world. And sometimes you just have to go let them be mediocre over there. That's not even mediocre. Because the fact that, one, you acknowledge it. You acknowledge but, there's obviously a problem. But, but then you say it's too complicated and hard to figure out a solution. You are actually pushed to the opposite. And I'll actually take an ignorant person who doesn't even think that there's a problem yeah. over that. Because in their mind, they have justified... They, they can't even fathom the idea that there has been a problem because of what they're... They're they're so focused on their inner world yeah. and what's going on right now that they don't want to look at the past. But you understand that? Yeah. That's crazy, crazy to me. That's bonkers to me. But I'm just, it's one of those things like, who voted for you? And after hearing that, you should never vote for him again. Yeah. Because the pro- bottom line that is we have some one, he's lazy. really, he's lazy as hell. We have really difficult problems that we need to solve in this country. Healthcare take, is, yeah, take healthcare race is, away. Take race take away. away. Healthcare is not an easy solution. No. Why, like, so even though everybody's like it. Medicare for everyone and why this, that, and other, it. it's complicated. Mm-hmm. So you're just not going to try to figure it out? Like, ain't that your job? Ain't that why you got voted for? Ain't mm-hmm. that why you run for office to figure out the like complicated issues that make our country work and try to make it work better? Like, isn't that the whole point of government? Like, that's your, and you just said you can't do it. It's too much. Bye, and it Felicia. also makes me so happy too with uh, what's the name, Governor Tom, signing that because taking away whatever racial, whatever anything from it. I just want to ask. How did did that affect your day? Did it affect your day? Is your day ruined now? Did you it know who I'm talking? The person I'm even talking to ain't even watching this show. Oh, but he's talking to someone specific. I'm not. I'm talking to a specific group of people. Mm-hmm. But like, did it ruin your day? Can you not go to CBS? <laughs> Can you not get your opal and air polish, girl? Ooh, you know, that's real. Your, your your life will go on. Disgusting. If we honor. All that is America. Oh my God! So you have to watch the Real World on Facebook. Okay. So why I'm saying that is because I gagged. I was in J Lo. Was what J Lo is? I know you would think I got excited too, but it's her name is actually Jennifer Lopez, and it is not Jenny from the Bronx. Jenny J Lo, are you from the Bronx? I am not. I was born and raised here in L A. She's She's Jenny from Jenny Jenny from the L A. So, anyways, but it is. You know, I had my ups and downs with it because, you know, typically I watch the real world and I like the whole, like, seven strangers coming together. And eventually, you know, the big things is, like, they go out, they drink, and they fight, and they argue, right? Yeah. And then, of course, like, race comes into it, sexuality eventually comes into it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what MTV was doing. They specifically picked these people Mm -hmm. to have social commentary arguments. When I tell you Black, white, Muslim, gay, sexually fluid, da, 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 like white supremacy. The word white supremacy came up in the first episode. I'm like, what am I watching? <laughs> but one thing I did learn from it, and it's so it's so funny to just kind of hear these three topics and then kind of tie it with this. Um, on the show, this white girl was like, I don't want to speak up. Well, actually, on the show, every time an argument of color mm-hmm. came up, the white people would get up and walk away casually mm-hmm. and just go sit somewhere else. And I had this conversation with someone, and they were like, well, maybe they just didn't understand it or they didn't feel educated enough to talk about it and I'm going to say that there were two men of color and both handled the situation differently one was very aggressive and uh, came with anger the other one was more well why do you feel that way and I think we live in this world where there's understandably I understand both sides of why things are happening but it's like uh, the what was he a governor? You just said who? Mm-hmm. It's like that. You recognize a problem. Don't walk away from the problem. And if you are uneducated, don't throw an opinion in. Just ask. Say hey. 
I know this might sound crazy. I want to learn. I don't understand the Colin Kaepernick situation. That was the thing that they were talking about. I don't understand the idea of why you believe that, you know, I am a white supremacist, you know, instead of anger, instead of running away from it, you know, and then on the opposite end, you know, there was one uh, African-American male and it was, he was so angry and he met the, 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 them getting away from the conversation with anger. And I understand your anger, but there's no solving anything there because you're just, there's more friction. And, I think that the, I was a little kind of like, what is this show happening right now? But I do think it's kind of important. And I, now I'm kind of understanding why MTV might have put it on Facebook Watch. Yeah, versus, versus actually TV. TV. Interesting. Yeah. Well, and I just, you know, I recommend you watch it. I recommend that it inspire you, whatever race you are to be open to conversation and instead of seeing somebody walk away and poking at them say hey bring the conversation to them there's a way to do it you know and I think on the opposite end instead of running away from it and saying oh well every time I say my opinion you know it gets shut down or shitted on well maybe you're delivering your opinion maybe you actually don't mean what you're actually saying and maybe you need to listen to somebody else and empathize with what they're saying and empathize with their um, their experience in life because your experience is very different from their experience everyone's experience is very different from each other, which you have to acknowledge. Whether you are ta- a white person talking to a white person, you guys do not live in the same experience. So imagine the opposite and have that conversation. Be open to it. Don't say, you know, oh, I'm not racist, I'm not racist, but then you don't want to have the conversation. Have that conversation and say, you know what, I'm going to be man enough or woman enough to sit through this conversation and own, you know what, I do understand my privilege. I do understand the power that I have held. Maybe you haven't used your privilege in the way that you think you used it. The world a lot, well, the world gives you privilege without you acknowledging that you are using it. Now there are others who use their, who know that and use their privilege to a whole nother extent, but there are levels to it and be open be open to the conversation I just think that I you know at first was a little taken back by it but then when I really sat down with it I was like you know what I love that it's that deep of a conversation to have it's a flashlight we'll see I haven't watched it so I don't know but I found it hard to believe that at this point in time that because obviously that conversation has been being had on the real world since the very first real but world no, 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 in no, no, New York. But it's like very so spotty though. I'm interested. I mean, I guess I'm kind of interested, but I'm also kind of exhausted already. I feel like I'm the angry black guy who's like, it's 2019. I'm tired of having to be nice about this conversation and the fact that you feel uncomfortable and you feel like you can walk away because that's your privilege. You get to walk away from it. I don't get to walk out mm-hmm. of my black skin and stop being black and you don't stop shooting me But it was two black it. men arguing so, and it, that's what actually what we'll drove see. the conversation to a so whole we'll nother see. level. I mean, a we'll, black we'll gay Christian out. Republican. Amazing. That's <laughs> amazing. That's black gay Christian Republican. I mean, you know, it's possible. That's what's sad because, like, Republican has gotten a really yeah, horrible name. That's true. At this point, like, don't get me wrong. And Democrat does too. The, I think I, they that's all why have. I can't sit on either side, to be quite honest. And I don't like talking about politics, but I will talk about this part of it. Yeah. Whoa. Each side. To an extreme. Yeah. Like, I know. Stop putting yourself in a fucking... This is Americans. Stop putting yourself in a fucking box. Well, a lot of them don't, which is why there is a problem. But then that's also how but we got Trump. But then you don't stand... But oh, that's how we got oh, Trump. Yeah. Because a lot of people didn't identify with either. And he was supposed to be the anomaly because he wasn't a regular Republican. And most of the Republicans actually views. hated him. Yeah, I mean, it's it's debatable, but um, this is kind of still in the same vein. We're going to finish out with this last story. Um, Oh, Kyle. Oh, Kyle. Yep, it's our EUR Web Spotlight Story of the Week. Oh, Kyle. Twitter Story of the Week, huh? Oh, Kyle, and it's still going on. What's his last name? Kyle Yushev? I don't know what his name is. Kyle, I don't actually care what your name is. I think you're a dick, but whatever. Um, So Kyle Kashev is a, a young, bright 
mind who had the privilege of being accepted to Harvard University. Um, Harvard found out a little bit after he was accepted that um, Mr. Kyle has said some pretty horrible things in the past about uh, black folks and people in general. So he's made some comments on social media and in group chats, like on a Google, like on a Google spreadsheet for like AP American history class. Like <laughs> what, dude, who are you? Um, he's used the N word. He's, you know, been a- anti-Semitic in these comments. They were, he was 16 years old at the time. I assume AP American, he was a junior, um, <laughs> which was just last year. He apologized. Right he now. apologized, um, but Harvard still rescinded their admission for the school. And every lots of people got up in arms about it. A lot of conservatives got up in arms about it because they actually think, number one, that, oh, God, he's only a child. How could you hold him accountable for a thing? He's apologized. Like, this isn't fair. You're ruining his life, blah, 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 blah. And there's some conservative conspiracy theorists that also say because he he was at the high school with the Parkland shooting. And after the Parkland shooting, he kind of got a name for himself from supporting from because a lot of if you remember, a lot of the Parkland survivors were talking about gun control and they did that big rally with all the kids. And there was a lot of kids stepping forward like we have to do something about gun control. He was on the other end of it saying no to gun control. He's a firm believer in the Second Amendment and the guns and whatnot. And he supported another bill that was sort of like enhancing the security and procedures at schools to make them safer, not necessarily restricting gun ownership. Um, So a lot of conservative conspiracy theorists are like, oh, that's really why they didn't want him there, because he's supporting the Second Amendment and blah, 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 blah. Not because he called his fellow students the N-word and anti-Semitic comments. So anyway, he went on, he tweeted a whole bunch of stuff, he was crying and whatnot, and he's all sad, and everybody's like, his life is ruined, and how could we do this to children, blah, 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 blah. What's and sad is your life isn't even ruined. That's what I keep saying. I'm like, when, privilege. when did it become a right to go to Harvard? They're not saying, dude, you can't go to college. Nowhere. They literally said, sorry, you can't come here because we don't support that. And I think, because Harvard did that in the past. We did the story like two years ago. There was like a group of 10 kids that got kicked out of Harvard for doing something very similar. They had put a bunch of comments and Harvard has made it very well known that they are specifically trying to tackle the environment of racial tension on their campus, which has been a problem and is a problem at most universities, especially those top tier universities I experienced in myself um, in terms of race relations when it's a predominantly white institution. And historically, very white as well. Like, so I don't understand why people are like, this poor kid, what happened? Like, what is he going to do now? Like, dude, you got into Harvard. You can go somewhere else. Sorry, bro. It's going to be okay. You fucked up. And why do we think that an 18-year-old should not be held accountable for his actions previously? Who said that? Any, all I'm these people man. that are, like, supporting. Like, I just don't understand. You're 18. Because guess what? If you killed somebody, you'd be held accountable. Exactly. And we're just coming off the Central Park Five, y'all. Like, the when they see us this. We were totally fine putting a 14-year-old little boy in jail. Mm, they were black, though. So, <laughs> I don't understand. I don't see how we can't see... The discrepancies here. And then the fact that you're coming out here and going through these emotions when that documentary even came up. <laughs> like, I just can't. How it's, ashamed. It's Should actually you be? like. It's appalling. It's appalling and almost laughable. And who are your parents? Yeah. Because my, I would be like, if you don't shut your and sit your ass down for doing that, you were stupid. Pull, pull a note from Linda, wherever her name is, from the Central Park Five and delete your accounts. All of them. And focus on life. Read. Yeah. Like, really read. Read the things that you aren't reading. Because clearly... What you read, it ain't working. Right. Ain't working. But, I mean, it got you into Harvard. Well, I mean, that's just numbers. True that. But... And grammar. That being said, because we have a few minutes left, we have to close out with... Because, you know, we're all stressed out about everything. We're talking about politics. So I'm happy. Joe Biden. A racist. Do you buy that? Well, you know. <laughs> so that story came out today, I guess, or this morning, yesterday. I actually didn't he, hear it. Okay, so basically he was on the campaign trail and he made a comment um, regarding how he had to work with segregationists. Because obviously Joe Biden's like 90, 
well, not really, but like almost. But like, he's and old. he's been in Congress forever, so he's definitely had to deal with some surreal, some for real racist. Like he was talking about his relationship with Strom Thurmond, who was a supreme racist, and like having to cross the aisle and work with people you don't like, and this, that, and the other. And I think I, you guys, forgive me if I'm not quoting this correctly, but I believe he was referring to Strom Thurmond when he said he never called me boy in that way. And he sort of tried to equate, like, that. that's why it was okay that he, because he, like, gave Strom's um, eulogy or something at his funeral or some shit like that. I don't know. But, so Cory Booker, like, came back and was like, that is some hurtful racist shit to say, because clearly the word boy is not used against you the way that it is used against people of my skin tone. And a lot of people are like, oh, he's racist, he's racist, he's racist. And then some people are like, maybe he's not racist, but he's extremely racially tone deaf in this moment to make that type of comment and to be running for president. Do you want him to be president? Because right now he's the, he's the front runner. Do I think he's racist? No. I hope Obama called him. Yeah, I don't think so. I think that it's, you know, I think that when you're in, like, as a white person, being around a lot of people of color, Mm -hmm. um, you hear certain conversation, but, I mean, you have to be educated enough, like, never, and I think, honestly, like, genuinely, I've used the, I'm going to be honest, I've used the N-word once. I can actually recall it, and like it was so under my breath, but it was I was angry at, and it was actually to a white person, and I checked myself, but I was around men who use it, and like it was used in a, I don't know, you know what I mean, and like I got mad at myself, and my friends who I was with was like, yeah, like when are you tripping them? Actually, literally used it towards me, and was like, it ain't nothing, like, and I was affected by it. And so I think it's just like Joe, like, you know, understand, listen, and be cautious. Like, you have to be. When you are living in this world and you are one, especially a representative of somebody who is supposed to be an ally, and you use something like that, you know, it is, you know, a fault on your behalf because you are now the crack in the cement. You are allowing that to pour in. You are allowing, now you've used it, well now this person can use it who is much more ignorant than the choice word that you've used and can take that and run with it. And it's, you you need to do your due diligence, Joe. Like, I don't think he's racist. I wouldn't say that. You know, I think Corey is, has been jumping at a lot of things lately on Twitter. If you look at his Twitter, I'm like, Corey, Boy, I can't. Bye bye. Yeah, I can't, Corey. Um, he, I think he's probably just trying to gain some more. That's ground the in thing, the race. and it almost is actually disgusting too, bro. How, because it's like it's disgusting too. But I will say this: this is what because I was trying to think about it. I'm like, I don't think for a second Joe was racist. No, but but <laughs> what I do think is that Joe is old. Yeah, Joe comes from a time. Comes from a time. Where he was the stand-up guy, and he really does believe and like want to fight for people and all of that. But I do think that there's probably parts of him where it will start to show now that he's like, ah, the sensitivities are too much because I clearly am not trying to like be racist. But the depths of the system that exists, unfortunately still belong to you and are the 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 things which you were built upon and i think that it's hard because i'm like would i vote for him are we in a position where we are so desperate that joe needs to be the nominee because we're trying to pacify the people that would vote for trump but like don't want to and whatever instead of voting for who really would push us forward and i don't necessarily think that joe would push us forward i think he would not take us backwards or you know harm us in the way that i think trump right now would. we're teetering and joe would even it even out. it out but i feel like it would not be actual progress in my opinion because i do think that he still represents a lot of the structures and a lot of the sh- cultural norms that he supports that are upholding something that we need to dismantle and I don't think he'd be willing to dismantle enough okay. so but that being said it's and it's too because it's like even I with Corey I said boy you know and I think to myself like 
one thing like and even I work on it you know I where I'm trying to use less cuss words I as I get older you know because I think we live in a generation where certain things it's cool to say you know what I mean certain words like yo bitch like things like that and it's like well really like what does this word mean how can I take that word erase that word and switch it with something else and change my vocabulary you know and when I think of boy girl I actually notice this a lot but like I don't think I actually call men men and women women I and I think that's my personal growth that I need to do as far as being like you are a woman you are a man I am a man but because I grew up, and I would say that being gay stunted certain parts of my growth because I didn't get to live a certain part of my life as myself, and I didn't get to experience that at, until an older age. And that's totally based off me seeing it in someone's father who came out later in life, and it made me look at my own life like, whoa, I really don't know what I did with my high school years. <laughs> And so I recognize me, like, at 33 being like, girl, boy, and it's like, those. that's not the vocabulary. Those, uh, b- girl, boy, that is an age, and I'm not in that bracket. I'm not in that age, and I think that's, again, with Joe, like, you might be used to saying that because somebody's younger, because of what maybe it has nothing to do with race, or maybe because it was a word that was used at the time and it was popular, and then it just became a part of your vocabulary, and you don't even mean it in that way. But acknowledging that, you know what? Language matters. Language matters. Language matters, and we are at a shift and a fork in the road culturally where it seems like everything is a problem and everything this and that and the other, but I think it's a point where we're finally all standing up for the things that we feel that we deserve and the way we deserve to be spoken to and spoken about and treated and all of that. And it's going to take work to figure out those lines and those boundaries and these are new waters. And if you're not willing to navigate those new waters, then you don't need to be a part of that. Yeah. Like You need to step aside and allow the people that who want to do the work and want to rebuild and build us up to be better make room for that and I don't necessarily know I know that Joe feels like our like ace in the hole because of the situation we're in but after this conversation and Joe did not apologize he stands by what he said and um, Cory Booker also did not apologize and he stands by what he said so in the end I don't know what that's going to mean we get a debate next week with all 800 of the Democratic nominees so I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes (laughs) but it just really made me think about where we are and is destiny's but it made me think so y'all think about it Amen. Think about it, think about it, think about it. And on that note, who knew we could talk for just, you know, about twice. But anyway, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, Jesse, where can they find you, see you, talk to you, and all that good stuff? Boom, hit me up everywhere at DJ Jesse J, also over at After Buzz. Right now, I'm about to do Talking TED Talks, and we're talking about how children's movies uh, growing up affect manhood. And also Monday nights, 9.30, After Buzz, tonight, it's my late night talk show with Jesse Janet. Well, all right, then. Y'all check that out. Y'all can find me everywhere at Stuart Starlet. Make sure you follow us here at BHL Online. Check us out again. Comment, like, do all that good stuff. And also, enjoy your freaking weekend, because it's been a real week, Woo! y'all. It's been a week. Thank you, thank Salsa you, thank you. and beer. You. Oh, I wish. Have a good one, y'all. What's tea? On behalf of our BHL staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in to Black Hollywood Live, the world's first digital broadcast network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Check out our Black Hollywood Live YouTube page for even more great programming and amazing content. And be sure to subscribe and like our channel when you do. I'm your BHL host, Nakia Monet, and you can find me on all social media at Kiki Boom Boom or at Black Hollywood Live. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined.